joint pain. <laughs> Welcome to brain fog. <laughs> what am I saying? There is a plane flying. They're so noisy. It's joint pain. The sea is falling. I should secure with pins. Please like, subscribe. Hola amigos, Daniela here from Through the Looking Glass. Welcome back to another video. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. In this channel, I'll talk about my life dealing with several chronic illnesses. Today, I want to talk about symptoms of fibromyalgia. May is chronic illness in general awareness month, and in specific, May 12 is Fibromyalgia Awareness Day. So I'm focusing this month's videos on fibromyalgia also because that's the condition that I have been diagnosed for the longest and the one that I have most experience with. First, let's just define what fibromyalgia is. I'm just gonna read it here from a CDC website and that is Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Fibromyalgia is a condition that causes pain all over the body, sleep problems, fatigue, and often emotional and mental distress. Second, how many people in the world are affected by fibromyalgia? It's actually thought that one in 20 people in the world suffer from fibromyalgia. If you consider the amount of people in this planet, that is a lot of people suffering from fibromyalgia. So let's get into the symptoms of fibromyalgia. Not everybody will have all those symptoms at the same time. Those are symptoms that can present in fibromyalgia. But the biggest one, the most sort of describing one is generalized pain. For me, that feels uh, sometimes like I have just done a really, really, really strong workout. And just like, you know, when you wake up the next day, like super sore, like every movement you make, your, your muscles just ache. I also sometimes have pain, like if you have pull the muscle, you know, like muscle knots, when you have a very, very localized, like a specific point in my back usually, uh, and that you can actually feel, like if I ask my husband to massage my back, like I can hear it clicking as he massages it and he can actually feel that hard mass. The second kind of pain is nerve pain. And that pain, it's a little bit harder to describe. Like if I try to describe that someone, I would say that if you, got one of those anatomy books and you look at the central nerve system and you look at all the different paths like in the skeleton that you look all the nerves i can actually feel that in my body like i can map those nerves on my body i kind of know where exactly all my nerves are it is very difficult to describe the other kind of pain that i also feel is like a burning sensation but that is mostly on my skin more like a bad sunburn you know like when you've been in the sun all day long and you didn't put any protection and then like you feel that your skin is hot and burning and you know you put a closing that's a little bit tight and that close touches your skin and that actually hurts and burns that is the burning sensation that i have i don't always have all the three kinds of pain at the same time however it can happen but most of the time it seems to focus more in either muscle pain or the, the skin burning pain or kind of nerve tingly burning sensation pain. So another very common symptom of fibromyalgia is sensitivity to touch. Even when I don't have that burning sensation on my skin, any pressure feels a lot more intense than it actually is. So that makes it very difficult for me to sit or be in any position for a long period of time. And also sometimes even just a hug or, you know, like somebody just pressing against you. Like even when my dog comes on the bed and she likes to kind of lay over my legs, sometimes I can't stand that. Just her pressure on my legs really, really hurts. The next one is joint pain. It doesn't have to be the same joint every time and it doesn't have to be 
all the joints at the same time. So it could be different joints at different days in different combinations of joints in different days. For me, where I feel the most is my hips, knees, and my hands. My hips and my hands, I would say, are the worst. My hands can hurt so much that I can't even type on the computer or type on my phone, and it's very hard to do anything by hand. Like, I can't chop vegetables, like when I'm cooking, anything that requires a little bit of pressure with my hands can be very, very, very painful. And and the same way that this pain kicks in, it goes away without any explanation, without any reason. One day it can be so debilitating that even holding a glass of water to drink can be extremely painful. Like I keep dropping things all day long. And then just like that, next day will come and it will be gone completely gone. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. It's crazy to me. Like, I cannot even understand myself. I can, I couldn't possibly expect anybody else to understand it because I don't know. I don't know. Another one that's very common for me, which falls into that muscle spasm and pain category is neck pain and stiffness. Uh, I could, you know, sometimes wake up like I felt like I pulled my neck and you kind of like feel like you're locked like in a certain position. It's usually when that happens, it does take a good three to four days to go away. So it's not the same as the joint pain that just absolutely just comes and disappears. This, like once I get to the, like those muscle knots or those muscle pains, they take some time to go away. This next one is horrible. It's absolutely horrible horrible. It's restless leg syndromes. Don't be fooled by the name, okay? Because it is not just on your legs. You can actually have that all over your body. I cannot even explain what that is and what that feels. It's just, you have this, it, it's not a pain. It's like this uncomfortableness in your body. It's that you need to move. Like you can't, there's like this energy like the surge inside you and you cannot sit still it can be just on your legs and if it's just on the legs like you're often like shaking your legs and moving your legs walking helps i have to get up and keep pacing back and forth and that helps me to cope it's very hard to do that when trying to go to sleep and that's usually when it kicks in it's most common at night when you're going to bed but i've had it all over my body where i'm literally laying in bed like shaking arms and legs and everything and I just feel like I'm this crazy person and nothing relieves it. Nothing really gives you relief. It's absolutely awful. The worst thing is to have this when stuck in an airplane where I'm just sitting in the, in a middle seat and there's people all around me and I cannot move and I just feel like I'm being electrocuted in the chair. It's just like, oh, it's awful. Next, is sensitivity to sounds, smells, temperature. Basically, if you imagine a big magnifying glass and any input that's coming in terms of sound, light, or temperature, you just magnify it. Turn up like 10 notches. That's what it is for us with fibromyalgia. So anywhere that we go, like if somebody passes by with some perfume, it's like somebody dumped the whole bottle on your head. If you go out and there is like a cool breeze, like to me, it's just like a blizzard. If I'm just laying in the sun and it's a little bit warmer, it's like I'm being scorched. Another type of pain that I have is feeling like I have bruises. Sometimes I do have bruises. I do tend to bruise quite a bit. I don't know if that's directly related to fibromyalgia or it could be from some other conditions because I do have other diagnosis as well. A lot of my other diagnoses actually overlap with fibromyalgia. So even though sometimes there isn't a visible bruise, it feels like there is one. So it's a very localized like patch on my leg or my back that only in that spot feels really, really tender to the touch. And that kind of feeling of when you have a bruise and you sort of slightly touch and that kind of pain, 
that's how it feels but then i look at it and i show it to my husband and he's like no there's there's nothing there absolutely nothing there it just makes you feel so crazy because how can you feel something so real not have other people see it not have the proof there for what you're feeling it is very very frustrating then there is the famous brain fog it can be bad you guys have no idea how hard it is for me to film those youtube videos especially if it's a more scripted one i have to go over and over and over and you think that i can say three sentences together in a row no you probably realize that my videos have a lot of cuts because i basically get through them sentence by sentence but even the the less structured ones where i'm just kind of sitting with you guys and talking sometimes the lack of word like you know you want to say something and it's at the tip of your tongue and you know that word and it just doesn't come to you it just doesn't and it, that drives me crazy it drives me crazy my brain fog is the worst in the morning it is definitely my brain takes a good hour to two hours to wake up i stare at a wall drinking my cup of coffee and it yeah don't ask me anything don't talk to me for that first hour because it's we're not gonna engage we're not gonna engage in a conversation because it's simply not possible then there is extreme fatigue and i know there is a condition on itself called chronic fatigue syndrome and a lot of people who have fibromyalgia may also have chronic fatigue syndrome but i think the difference at least for me is when you are diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome that is your primarily issue your primarily concern you have way more days where fatigue is the biggest problem as i find that with fibromyalgia yes there is a lot of chronic fatigue involved but i would say that primarily the pain is the issue now there is a difference between fatigue and being tired so i just want to kind of make that clear being tired is a feeling that there is an explanation for that it results from an extra expenditure of energy uh, it comes from doing a lot or not resting enough that gets resolved with rest fatigue is different fatigue often there is no explanation you may have had all the rest and have no reason and have done nothing special and you still feel completely exhausted you feel like there is no life inside of you and it's not relieved by rest it's not relieved by sleeping it's not relieved by taking it easy it's just something that's completely out of your control and uh it's it's if you think of a, like a cell phone that only ever goes up to 10 percent how much can you actually use that phone now let's talk about exercise intolerance that's not a very common symptom of people with fibromyalgia so what is exercise intolerance you may be asking exercise intolerance is a person's inability to perform physical activities what that means is usually there is a response from the body where there is extreme pain involved after extreme fatigue some people may run a low fever and uh, some people may get very nauseous vomit so basically it's a reaction of the body to exercise so instead of people feeling good after ex exercise Exercise, they actually feel absolutely horrible over time it can get better so you can try and do a little bit of exercise and kind of put up with the side effects and then you know wait a few days and then go and do the same thing again and then you know just suffer for a few days and then do it again and then over time that response of your body it starts to get less and less and less and then eventually you can even increase a little bit the amount of exercise that you're doing and then your body kind of reacts again but then you kind of continue going it for you know a few weeks and then it gets used to it so you have to build it very 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 slowly and i have done that and it is possible the issue is you cannot stop you have to keep going otherwise you are back to zero 
and life happens. People get sick. When I get my period, I have so much pain that I can't even move. Every time there is a little hump and I don't do it for a week or I don't do it for a couple of sessions, I am literally back to zero. I can go through pain. I can go through, you know, all those things knowing that I'm going somewhere, that I'm achieving something. But when you go through all of that and then you're just strong back at the beginning, it's heartbreaking. It's just totally heartbreaking. Also, another very common symptom of fibromyalgia is poor quality of sleep and insomnia. So people generally have either uh, difficulty falling asleep and difficulty maintaining sleep and difficulty with restful sleep. So for those who can fall asleep, they don't sleep well and they don't recover. And the worst part is that the less you sleep and the less you rest, the more pain you have. But also the more pain you have, the harder it is to fall asleep. So you can so easily get into that vicious cycle. Now let's talk about chronic headaches and migraines. For me, that is one of the worst issues with my fibromyalgia. It can also be from other diagnoses that I have and they just sort of overlap, but I have migraines every single day. They are most of the time manageable with medication. So I do take medication for it every single day. If I don't take medication, I end up in the emergency room. It is that bad. So I have to take medications every day. Sometimes the medications work really well and it completely abolishes the migraine and I can just carry on with the rest of the day. And then sometimes it just takes the edge off and I still need to carry on with the day with somewhat of a, a migraine. So migraines differ from uh, headaches in the sense that it's a neurological event. So often with migraines, you have severe nausea, light sensitivity. People with fibromyalgia also tend to have a bit of a temperature instability. Their bodies are not very efficient at regulating itself. So it is very, very easy and very, very quickly you go from being cold to being hot. Painful menstruations is also a common symptom of fibromyalgia. Often people with fibromyalgia also have other conditions, other chronic conditions going on, and endometriosis is one of them. Though I don't have endometriosis myself, I do suffer a lot with my periods. I don't feel cramps. That's not my issue when I say menstruation pain. When people refer to like period pain, they're mostly referring to like cramps. I don't feel so much cramps. It's more like a horrible, horrible nerve pain that goes all the way down my legs and it everything just burns around my pelvis. Some people also have a lot of pain in their face, pain in their jaw. That's not something that I suffer with. I don't tend to have a lot of pain in my jaw. Then there's people that have a lot of pain in their chest, like a burning sensation on the rib cage. There is a name for that, a condition that I can't remember right now the name. Welcome to Brain Fog. And last but not least, anxiety and depression. Is anxiety and depression directly related to fibromyalgia as the condition itself? Or is it because we are dealing with all of the previously discussed symptoms? No wonder someone would have anxiety and depression when you're dealing with such a broad amount of symptoms. I also think the level of anxiety and depression in people with fibromyalgia depends a lot on the support system that they have. If they feel supported, if they feel believed, if they have accommodations in their lives. I think that makes a huge difference on how people cope and also you know, that reflects in the mental health. Fibromyalgia requires a multidisciplinary approach because there's so many different symptoms in different body systems that if you go and see a specialist for each one of those body systems, they're going to look at it individually and not how it relates to the other ones. And they may give you specific medications that are going to treat symptoms. But then of course, what happens when you take a medication? Side effects. It is crazy. It is really, really, really difficult to live with fibromyalgia. So if you know someone 
who has fibromyalgia, give them a really, really gentle hug. Tell them you believe them, you appreciate them in spite of everything that they're coping with every single day of their lives. And if they're having a bad day, and if they're having a day where they just need to stay in bed, don't judge, just support them because there's so much that we're going through. There's so much that we're struggling with every single day. And some days are easier than others. And those are usually the days that you see us out and about and doing things and able to carry that smile on our faces. But then there's other days that is just too much, that we need a break from telling ourselves that we're okay, even when we're not okay. If you suffer with fibromyalgia yourself, leave in the comments below what is your worst fibromyalgia symptoms. Do you have all of the above discussed symptoms or are there some that are a little bit more prominent to you? Or did I leave anything out? I hope you really enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe. It really helps your girl out. And uh, until the next one, ciao for now. Stop.